piccolo when I'm going to be speaking because taking that accordion off and getting over in here <laughs> quickly. <laughs> How's everybody this morning? Yes, so thankful to be back with you all and uh, really appreciate the invitation to be in your presence this morning. And so thank you for that. I want to introduce you to somebody. Um, she's a first time visitor. Her, her name is Opal. She was my grandma and uh, was quite an intriguing and intense and inspiring personality. My grandma was a poet and she was a, a singer and a songwriter and a seamstress and she was actually a sharpshooter. She won competitions and she was full of surprises. Uh, and beyond that, she was a, 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 a this kind of charismatic character, this mystic of the highest order. She had a prayer closet that she went into every day for hours, and she would do what she called wailing and travailing in prayer. I mean, Grandma meant it, and she was going to get it here, whatever it took, and so she took herself into that space every day. And that presence in my life was so deeply inspiring. In fact, it um, it's guided my journey so much to just have that kind of mystical intimacy, wanting that intimacy with, with spirit. But I have to be honest, you know, sometimes her intense energy, it, while it captivated me, it would freak me out a little bit because she, <laughs> Amy knows she was special, right? She really was. So things like this would be going on. We would just be sitting in the living room as you do with your grandma, right? And you're you're looking through photo albums or you're sorting through threads of spools and trying to match up colors. And my grandma leaned over and said, life is a dressing room for eternity. Wow, grandma. <laughs> wow. Um, and I was like, excuse me, Grandma, I need to go to the restroom. And I wrote it down real quick in the restroom. And later, Amy and I made it a song and also an album title. Um, but, you know, I was so inspired by her. And she always took every moment was a potential moment for spiritual teaching and, and, and preaching even. At times, Grandma shouted, you know. So she said to me, life is a dressing room for eternity. So I want us to hold that a little bit this morning. The most intense thing that she ever said to me was as she was passing me peach preserves across the table, she said, in South Africa, there are people who cast spells on other people that causes feathers to grow out of the pores of their skin. I nearly dropped the peach preserves, I have to be honest. But she, she always had my full attention, and I, I was always ready for the spiritual lesson, whatever it was going to be that she shared. So one afternoon when I was with her, and she was cooking this giant pot of pinto beans and frying up cornbread, um, she started teaching and preaching. And she said, these beans will be mighty good if we endure the process. Now, it may be daunting and intimidating, but it takes a long time, but it's worth it. Our spiritual journey is like this. We need not skip the steps or rush the process if we want the flavor. She had soaked the beans the night before. She'd rinsed them off and was putting them in the water as she told me this, my grandma was a mystical multitasker. <laughs> so as the hours went on, she continued the instruction, and I was complimenting her on uh, how beautiful uh, her angel wing begonia looked. And she suddenly said, you got to skim the phone. So again, she always st startled me, but it just made me stand at attention to whatever she was going to say. And she said, you got to skim the phone when you bring the beans to a boil. This foam will come up to the surface. It's kind of like a sea foam, and you skim it off. Now that stuff, that's the nasty gases. It's coming up to the surface. It's not tasty. You just skim it off. And then she dropped to a loud whisper, and she said, our souls are like that. 
when God is cooking up what is needed in our lives to bring us to a boil so that all we need to release and let go can be skimmed to the top. You've got to be willing to let God bring you to a boil. Those beans and cornbread were the best beans and cornbread I had ever eaten in my entire lives, and not just because life because Grandma made them, but because they were rinsed, soaked, and boiled in deep mystical and spiritual wisdom. I, I've had times in my life, and especially the the last few years, where I felt like, man, I'm I've been boiling in this pot for a minute, you know. <laughs> um, during the past few years, both Amy and I had our dads pass away suddenly. Um, we've had two dogs and a kitty transition. I had two major surgeries, one with serious complications, which is why I'm still wearing these special shoes. We call them special. Um, uh, and all, of, all the while, you know, I will be honest with you, I, I, I'm, I'm imagining that what you have endured and maybe what you're enduring is just, if we're using cooking metaphors this morning, a drop in the pot compared to that. But I understand that feeling of why is this happening again or why does this keep happening or what have I done or make it, you know, can we get a break? And I will tell you, though, truthfully, I wouldn't change any of it. Um, this boiling process, I've seen and felt so deeply what it's bringing to the surface in my life to, to skim off and how my, when I'm willing to stay in it, how my, the flavor of my life is being enhanced and enriched, you know? I think sometimes we are ready to go from raw to barely cook. That's much more comfortable, you know, we like that. It's like, cook me a little, then, you know, let me sit here for a minute and get a little break. But that was good. I'm, I've, I've had quite enough. But to be honest, the, the, the desire is to be so spiritually on fire that when things come into our orbit, when they enter our lives, they're cooked. They're not left raw. They're not left undone. And that's what happens sometimes when we try to rush the process, when we want it to happen faster because it's uncomfortable, because it's sometimes literally painful because it's, it's so hot. One of my favorite Rumi stories is the chickpea and the cook, and it tells us about that fire of transformation. It's a story in which the chickpea tries to escape the pot, which we try to do sometimes. And the cook loves that chickpea so much, it just kind of knocks it back in there with a the ladle. This is from Rumi, chickpea to cook. A chickpea leaps almost over the rim of the pot where it's being boiled. Why are you doing this to me? The cook knocks him down with a ladle. Don't you try to jump out. You think I'm torturing you. I'm giving you flavor. So you can mix with spices and rice and be the lovely vitality of a human being. Remember when you drank rain in the garden? It was for this. Grace first, then a boiling new life begins. And the friend has something good to eat. Eventually, the chickpea will say to the cook, boil me some more. I can't do this by myself. I'm like an elephant that dreams of gardens in Hindustan and doesn't pay attention to his driver. You're my driver. You're my cook, my way into existence. I love your cooking. The cook says, I was once like you, fresh from the ground. Then I boiled in time and boiled in the body, two fierce boilings. My animal soul grew powerful. I controlled it with practices and boiled some more and boiled once beyond that and became your teacher. Eventually, the chickpea. Eventually, we will say to the cook, boil me some more. Hit me 
with your skimming spoon. I can't do this by myself. Sometimes we need a little tough love from the master chef because we can't seem to do it for ourselves. Sometimes we get stuck or snagged somewhere, and that is the most tough loving thing that God can do is boil us just a little more. So how, how do we get spiritually cooked? Uh, through the heat of life, through the, through the challenges and the circumstances that come up in our life, we are reworked and ultimately transformed if we allow that bowling process, if we trust what needs to be enriched and enhanced in our lives to create more flavor in our existence. It's a moment of magic, and, and I would even call it miraculous when we realize that this boiling process is for our benefit when we don't resist it but when we allow ourselves to be mixed and mingled with what is necessary to bring forth everything we need to release and let go of and skim it off you know and put it to the side so we can taste the fullness of this life that's being offered to us Sometimes we're cooked for a long time, like the chickpea, you know. It takes a long time to be infused with spices and softened and made able to be mixed into the, the greater flavor and substance. And sometimes we think this amount of cooking time is unbearable, that it's too much. But is there something in us, and are we willing to allow this process of transformation. We live in this society that <laughs> more and more wants everything to be processed quickly, right? It's a, it's a fast food society, but fast food equals poor indigestion. We want to fully digest and process and, and, and allow this to completely mix in our spirits and not just let it go in and get rid of it really quickly and not fully experience what is being we're in this big vat and we're being cooked up and it's the most loving thing that God can do would we really want to rush that process would we not want to trust the cook and let ourselves be tapped back down in that pot so many times when we need to stay right here present with what is and being patient with the preparation process, we try to escape. We feel discomfort and pain and fear and anger and grief. And these emotions actually encase us in a shell that needs and wants to be softened with comfort and peace and trust and love. If we don't, our hearts will harden in response to life's experience. And it's softening that keeps us connected and intimate. It's hardening that isolates us. And there's so much isolation going on in our world today, and I get it. It's intense. There's a lot of intense cooking going on. So we've got this little, sometimes we feel like we've got to put a protective barrier on, and we have this hardened shell but to really, really allow this cooking process to soften us, it's a catalyst for growth, and it actually accelerates our spiritual growth. We're postponing it. We think we're getting away with a little break from the cooking process. We're actually postponing it because I've got news for you. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to keep happening until we allow that process. I've experienced enough so far to know that. And I know, you know, what's that song? It's getting hot in here. But I'm not singing the next line. But it's getting hot in here. It's getting hot in here in our personal lives, in our lives as a, as a community, as a nation, as a world, as a universal humanity. We don't want to escape it. We don't want to miss what's intended for us. We don't want to miss the ingredients that are, that are being mixed and added 
into our very being to make us more flavorful, to make us more easily to digest for other human beings. We got it. We're in this together. We're in this big pot together, you know, and and so I'm I'm praying this morning. The title of this uh, talk was Don't Leave Me Raw, Cook Me in the Fire of Divine Love. And I'm praying this morning. I know in my heart, I want to pray this prayer. Don't leave me raw. I trust you. I trust you to cook me. It's painful. Letting go of our rawness is painful. But it's much more painful to keep getting in and out of the pot. Have you ever heard the story of, you know, when something is heated, it gradually gets to get used to the temperature raising. And you know how it is when your bath water is too hot and you stick your toe in and you're like, oh, not yet. I got to mix a little and make it just right. But have you ever noticed when you're in the bath water and you're slowly raising the temperature, you just adjust, just adjust, adjust. It's more difficult. It's more painful to stay raw and get in and out of the pot. We ourselves are the chickpea. We ourselves are the fire of love. We ourselves are the master chef that pushes us back into the flame. And the master chef loves us that much to push us back in there. And all we have to do is say yes. Do the words yes, chef, mean anything to anybody? Yes, chef. (laughs) <laughs> uh, to those of you who don't know this reference, it was brought in vividly into consciousness by a show called, it was a reality TV series called Hell's Kitchen, right? And Gordon Ramsay, the head chef, I had everyone answering him, yes, chef. Well, that's how we need to answer. And I thought it would be fun to share a little transcript from um, that show and let it be a little spiritual metaphor. So Amy doesn't know that she's going to, you don't know you're going to assist me with this. Yeah. You're going to actually be Gordon Ramsay. She'll make a good one, I promise. I'm going to be the narrator in Garrett, and you're going to be Gordon, okay? So anywhere where you see Gordon. Hoping to satisfy Chef Ramsay, Garrett rushes his chicken to the pass. Garrett, the chicken is raw. Pink chicken, undercooked, it's pink. Yes, Chef. You're going to kill someone. Garrett has just brought a dish to the pass that is not only inedible, but downright dangerous. You knew it's raw. You knew it's raw. I'm doing it because it's faster, Chef. It's the only reason. Faster? You've always got a answer for everything. (laughs) Faster means undone and lack of flavor. But I'm just trying to make it happen faster. Put it back in the pan. You're not tasting to know it is still undercooked. Yes, chef. There are some things you can't do in a kitchen. Yes, chef. And that's serving raw chicken. Get me a pan. Leave it in the water longer. Yes, chef. Bleep, bleep. (laughs) Why did the... Bleep, bleep. Chicken, cross the road. Garrett, why did the chicken cross the road, Garrett? I don't know, Chef. Because you didn't bleep cook it. (laughs) Yes, Chef. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. (laughs) Talk about intense teachers, huh? But what a spiritual metaphor. We'll stay raw if we don't leave it in the water longer. In fact, he actually said here, it's dangerous, isn't it? If we try to escape the process and make it happen faster, we'll be undone and have a lack of flavor. Are we willing to say, yes, chef, this morning and every moment? I'm praying for you and I'm praying for me that we have the courage of heart to go through the cooking and that we have the courage of heart to commit ourselves to the divine flame. May we have the heart to allow our cooking process to finish. What a difference between being half cooked 
in sustaining another human being or causing them indigestion or creating that kind of indigestion in our spiritual lives. And how sweet it is to find the great chef will plunge us back in if we trust in this boiling fire of love to finish our cooking. Thomas Keating said, the most intimate of the mystical experiences seems to be taste, in which we receive, so to speak, the kiss of God in our inmost being. Spirit, which is the most sweet kiss, pours into our inmost being the fire, the light, the life, and the love, unconditional and infinite love, which is the ultimate source of creation in the universe. The spiritual sense of taste is the very inlet into knowing God intimately and experiencing God intimately. Many know that the psalmist used this very word to describe the intense exaltation in knowing spirit. The psalmist said, Oh, taste and see the goodness of God. When we allow the cooking process to enrich and flavor our lives, we can expect some of the words that we use to describe taste, to describe our lives. Now, tell me how this sounds to you. I have an amazing, appetizing, delightful, enticing, exquisite, divine, luscious, delicious, sweet, savory, yummy, scrumptious, lick-smacking, distinctively spicy life. Right? I don't think I can. Yes, chef. Am I supposed to say yes, chef? Okay. Doesn't that sound more appetizing than I have a dull, bland, tasteless, mild, raw life? Taste is a way in which the presence of God, the spirit, the divine, whatever you call it, becomes a reality in us and through us. It's about a new life. Who was I talking to about being reborn this morning? Somebody, there we go. It's about a new life, being reborn out of this fire and turmoil. And it's about thanking the elements that brought us to, new, to this new place. Can you thank that circumstance or challenge in your life that's going on right 